Investigators are trying to figure out what led to a deadly crash in Scott County, why they've had to call in environmental cleanup crews. The U.S. Justice Department is taking action against a heroin epidemic. It's an issue that Madison County will be discussing next week. How members of the U.K. basketball team surprised many elementary school students around Lexington today. This is WQIT News at 6. Good evening. Tonight we're learning more about a deadly crash that has shut down a busy Scott County Road for hours. Police say that two garbage trucks and a car collided. It happened this afternoon on US 25 near the Moon Lake subdivision north of Georgetown. Monique Blair has an update now from investigators. She is live with our top story at 6. Monique? Good evening, Amber and Sam. It has been a full six hours since this accident happened, and you can see behind me, it is just still a very, very active scene out here. And that's because there were three vehicles involved in this accident, a black car and two garbage trucks. The driver of the car was killed in the accident. Now, police are still trying to figure out exactly how this accident happened. Scott County Emergency Management Deputy Director Michael Hennigan says one of the garbage trucks was full and headed to the landfill that is only about one mile away. He says that truck tipped on its side and leaked diesel fuel. The other truck was empty and headed away from the landfill, but hydraulic fluid spilled from it after the crash. Now, once the accident reconstruction team is finished working, environmental crews will work quickly to replace the now contaminated dirt with clean dirt. Everything will absolutely be safe. Uh, we have a uh, truckload of new soil that's already waiting to be put down. So it will be uh, fresh soil, seeded and strawed like we were never there. Now, because there is still quite a bit of work to do out here, US 25 between Gemini Trail and Rogers Gap Road is still expected to be closed for at least a couple more hours. I'm reporting live in Scott County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Monique, thank you. So a lot of work to do out there. Police tell us one of the truck drivers was taken to the hospital with unknown injuries. They say the other driver had minor injuries. Tonight we're tracking some showers and storms moving across parts of the bluegrass, and that's a sign of what's to come this weekend. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Yeah, scattering showers and storms, as you mentioned, Sam, dotting our skyline out there as we kick off the weekend, and that is a sign of what is coming up Saturday and into Sunday. Let's concentrate on your Friday evening ahead of us. A lot of folks are getting ready to head out the door and cheer on their favorite football team, and we do have a couple of hot spots of thunderstorms. Defender Radar Network take you into. Southern Kentucky with our first stop and a couple of thunderstorms that have been kind of blossoming so far this afternoon. A little bit of action coming out of Tennessee. Uh, Somerset got a little thunder and lightning that is just to our south, south of the Burnside area. Corbin, a lot of this action is now beginning to wind down a little bit, though Mount Vernon, north of London, the Greenmount area, and maybe toward McKee into Jackson County. Watch out for a little shower of thunderstorm. Isolated teeny tiny showers popping here across the Paris area and not too far away from the Mountain Parkway there into Clark County. Those may eventually try to grow up into some thunderstorms. Franklin County, look to your west. There's a sky that is darkening into the Shelby County area. And those thunderstorms that were just north of the BG Parkway have been diminishing a little bit. Very strong thunderstorm north of E Town and south of E Town. Some of that stuff's going to head toward parts of uh, Boyle County and into Washington and Marion counties. The majority of the heavy rains right now into parts of Missouri. That's our cold front due into town this weekend. And coming up here in a little more than five minutes, we'll focus on that weekend forecast and break it down with an hour by hour outlook. We have some new information tonight about a man accused of stealing textbooks from universities around the state. Moorhead State University Police say that today, a Rowan County grand jury indicted Anthony Shields on 24 counts of burglary. Investigators say he stole 24 textbooks from the Moorhead State campus. University of Kentucky police arrested Shields last month after they say he tried to sell textbooks stolen from Western Kentucky University at a Lexington bookstore. Police think he's also behind thefts at Northern Kentucky and Eastern Kentucky universities as well. It has become an epidemic in this state and around the country. And now President Obama and the Justice Department are pushing Congress to fight heroin. Kentucky has one of the highest heroin death rates in the country. And a central Kentucky coroner says he often sees the devastating effects of the drug in his county. Kristen Kennedy has the story new at 6.
My heroin was a big issue. Heroin, fentanyl. Madison County Coroner Jimmy Cornelison has dealt with close to 30 heroin overdoses this year, already ahead of last year's total. They're either laying there with a needle and a spoon beside them, or it's on the uh, on the uh, vanity in the bathroom. And for the coroner, notifying family. They know when they see me that I'm not there for coffee. Doesn't get any easier. We're losing a generation. You know that as well as I do. We're losing a generation. I mean, I'm going through kids that are, are my children's age. Cornelison believes education is key to keeping people away from the drug. It's a belief President Obama also talked about Friday when he released a proclamation making next week prescription opioid and heroin epidemic awareness week. Attorney General Loretta Lynch is scheduled to be here in Madison County next week. She'll be talking to students about the drug epidemic. It seems like to me that once they get into this game, it is very, very difficult to get out of it. Cornelison believes talking to youth about the dangers of opioids will help combat the problem. The Obama administration believes dedicating more than a billion dollars to treatment services will help, too. The attorney general is expected to talk about the president's policies during her visit to central Kentucky Tuesday. In Madison County, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Attorney General Loretta Lynch will also stop at the University of Kentucky Tuesday. She'll discuss her department's ideas for the treatment, prevention, and enforcement of heroin abuse. New tonight, a grand jury has indicted a Laurel County couple charged in connection to the death of their seven-week-old baby. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says the grand jury indicted Gary and Jessica Nicely for murder, criminal abuse, and assault. Police say the couple injured their seven-week-old twins, and one of them later died. They say the couple blamed each other for the injuries. Tonight we have learned that one of the three people charged in connection to the murder of a Kentucky National Guardsman also faces charges down in Tennessee. The Lexington police arrested 21-year-old Jeremy Harris earlier this week. They say the victim, Trevor Dilger, was found dead inside a burning car on Labor Day weekend. Caitlin Sentner talked to a woman in Tennessee who says Harris tried to kill her brother. She's at the live desk with more. Caitlin? Sam Montour Thomas, a Tennessee man, says he almost lost his life. And Shelby County, Tennessee officials say they have an active warrant out for their suspect. But that suspect, he's behind bars right here in Lexington. If he's willing to shoot his best friend, he wouldn't have lasted in another state. A family from Memphis, Tennessee, says they're breathing a sigh of relief after they got wind Jeremy Harris was locked up. Jeremy would come by the house, like, when he would get in trouble, you know, his mother would kick him out. He would be at our house, you know, getting fed. We called him family. The 21-year-old is charged in the murder of 24-year-old National Guardsman Trevor Dilger. He was picked up just this week by Lexington police. But a Tennessee family says this is the same Harris who shot someone multiple times in Shelby County and ran. He was selling, you know, an Apple Watch so he can, you know, buy some things for Kennedy. Chance Thomas says when this all went down, her brother Monter was selling a watch to make some cash and buy things for his daughter. She says he fell asleep in the car when the sale didn't go through, but didn't expect what came next. They robbed him. They shot him. He woke up to getting shot. He was shot four times, one centimeter from his heart. He almost died. Shelby County deputies confirm there's an active warrant out for Harris for attempted murder. Chance says her brother is recovering and her heart goes out to Harris's alleged victim here in Lexington. I hope that he gets what he deserves. Justice there has been served, but I also want closure for my brother. Now it's not clear what will happen with that warrant out of Tennessee. At the live desk, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Harris is scheduled to be back in court for a hearing on the Lexington murder charge on Thursday. A hearing was held today on an open records lawsuit the University of Kentucky filed against its student newspaper. The Kentucky Colonel wants documents related to a sexual assault investigation involving a former professor, but UK denied the request, saying it would violate the privacy of victims. Today, both sides agreed on a timeline for the case, and they're allowing Attorney General Andy Bashir to intervene. Bashir has claimed UK violated state law by not releasing the documents. Can review them in camera, maintain the confidentiality of those records, and then make a reasoned decision as to whether or not the denial of that inspection or disclosure uh, was valid under under the Open Records Act. The university now has 30 days to file a brief with the court. Many teachers at a Lexington daycare say they have not been paid in weeks, so today they walked off the job. 
The teachers at Bracktown Academy say it's been weeks since they've received a paycheck, but they say a few employees have been paid. Some parents say their children were turned away from the daycare this morning because there were not enough people working. First Baptist Church Bracktown runs the daycare. The pastor says there is money in the bank to pay employees and all their paychecks should clear. I don't understand why some of the checks cleared, some of the checks did not. I don't exactly know what that is, but ultimately it's my responsibility. We have been very patient. We have been told so many different stories as to what's going on. At last check, employees told us they had still not received their paychecks. It looks like some changes are on the way to Lexington's Bluegrass Airport. According to our news partners at the Herald Leader, airport leaders are planning nearly $35 million in upgrades. The improvements include additional hangars for private planes, a new baggage system, and additional parking. Airport leaders expect construction on all of these additions to be finished in two or three years. The UK basketball team scored a slam dunk today with some elementary school students in Lexington. We'll tell you about their assist next. A lot of smiles in this next story. <laughs> Students at a few Lexington Elementary schools received a special delivery today from the UK basketball team. Yeah, the cats brought packed lunches as part of a team effort with God's Pantry. Sabira Rafer talked to some of the players and students. Dressed in pride, the students at Picadome Elementary packed the school's gym. They didn't know why they were there, and they definitely didn't know that a group of Wildcats were coming to play. It made me happy. The men's basketball team packed dozens of lunches to deliver to the school. They also talked to the kids about hard work and dedication. Then it was time to play. It was so much fun to see all of them because I like Kentucky Wildcats. For some of the players on the team, they told me they remember what it was like when they were kids. So for them, it was easy to be outgoing and playful. I remember being little and looking up to guys like us who, uh, who would come into our schools. And, you know, um, it's, it's normal to us, but to them, we're like superheroes, right? So uh, it's great to be able to give them that kind of excitement and that little break from class to, uh, to have some fun and see us on a, on a regular, everyday basis, not just playing basketball. So The kids were able to show off their skills in a relay scooter race. But once basketballs hit the floor, every Wildcat was up on their feet. It made me, like, feel excited. I just hope that they get out of that you don't always have to be serious. Uh, I mean, Mike's 22, I'm 18, so, I mean, we're not always serious all the time. And, I mean, those kids are 11, 10, 9 years old, and, you know, every, you don't have to take everything serious. Sometimes you can just be a kid, and, you know, we, uh, I still have that kid inside of me. On their way out, the team left one more surprise. Each player signed a pair of basketball shoes for the school. In Lexington, Sabir Rayford, WKYT. And that is a pretty cool day at school. The team also brought lunches to Cassidy and Lansdowne Elementary Schools today. UK Athletics plans to deliver more than 5,000 lunches this school year. You still have time to get to Lexington Green tonight to listen to music at Lakeside Live. This is a live look at what's going on there tonight. The Greg Finger Band is playing. The music continues until 9 tonight. Lakeside Live will be held every Friday and Saturday night through October 15th. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. And we're trying to keep the rain away from Lakeside Live this evening and from a lot of those high school football games. We do have scattered thunderstorms that are ongoing into uh, parts of the region. Let's get into showing you those parts on our live sky cams. Corbin, we've had some thunderstorms around us. Notice that sky cam, though, has a drying Interstate 75. Look at Florence, northern Kentucky. Heavy rain there. Skies are darkening here into Etown with some strong thunderstorms nearby. Look at that darker sky that is showing up to the west of Lexington. Got a little shower and thunderstorm action to our west. Is it going to hold together and get into Fayette County? Right now, it is in a weakening stage, but additional showers and storms are going up across the entire area. That is the fight as we go into our weekend. You can never really show exactly where any one thunderstorm will fire up. You just know it's going to happen. Pretty strong thunderstorm here into Albany, uh, moving towards sections of Monticello into Wayne County. Showers, thunderstorms scattered across much of Casey County, southern parts of Lincoln County, and right on top of Somerset here into Pulaski County. We've had rain on and off across most of Laurel County. Getting into the action now to the north of London with the heaviest downpours here from Greenmount back to the west into Livingston, right on the Rock Castle and Jackson 
Laurel County lines, Lexington, a little rain to our west, a little rain to our east. Scattered thunderstorms here to the east of Richmond. Waco may be getting in on a gusty shower right now. Southeast of Winchester near Paris, the jump zone is Georgetown to Lexington. Some other uh, showers and thunderstorms weakening from Franklin County back toward the west. And here you go with some of those stronger storms right on top of Interstate 65. The main action is still well to our west. That's what's going to get in here as we go through the day tomorrow and carry us into our Sunday. So the forecast tomorrow, hear me out. It's not going to rain all the time. You're going to have some sun. You're going to have some clouds. You're going to have some scattered thunderstorms. Picking and choosing any one location at any one time. It's a crap shoot. Temperatures, though, will top out 80 to 85 degrees with those scattered thunderstorms that will be with us and not an all day rain. Sunday, more in the way of scattered thunderstorms around. Heaviest rain farther east. Get to Monday, wouldn't you know it? We get to the beginning of a brand new work week, and Mother Nature all of a sudden wants to give us some absolutely gorgeous weather for a day or so. Here's the hour by hour this evening. Scattered thunderstorms. You see that big green blob in your thing? I'm using a lower resolution model because those high res models right now are just totally missing where those thunderstorms are. This is just saying that anywhere you're seeing the green, this model is thinking there could be some scattered thunderstorms. So we get deeper into the day. There's a little. Uh, Kind of a wall of some thunderstorms in the western Kentucky that'll try to scoot in here. It weakens out and then fires back up as we go into Sunday across central and eastern Kentucky. The farther east that we go Sunday, the greater the threat for some more widespread stuff. We'll get that in and out of here fairly quickly. A little cool down into the 50s for lows. You know what? That's normal though. 80 on Monday is about normal. Then all of a sudden we get into Wednesday, Thursday, and maybe Friday, mid 80s are showing up ahead of a uh, push of some colder air. The following week, I do think things are going to take a chilly turn. All right? It's the first time I've said that in a while. 9 o'clock tomorrow in Nicholasville, there's a, a 5K and a 10 mile, the rail mm -hmm. runner. Mm -hmm. R.J. Corman's place. What do you think? Scatter, there will be some scattered storms around in the morning. Picking okay. one storm and where it's going to be is going to be the call in the morning. Get up, check in with Mike. First thing tomorrow morning, he'll be tracking those scattered storms for us. Right. Run fast to get out of the there rain. There you go. That's right. <laughs> Another big night of high school football ahead. Well, that's right. The schedule highlighted by Lafayette and Scott County will have our game time top 10 for you. And the Cats go for that first win tomorrow. The defense will have to make some big strides. That's ahead when we come back with sports. Kentucky is back home tomorrow afternoon. The Cats will need much improved play on both sides of the ball against New Mexico State. The Kentucky defense has yielded almost 1,100 yards in its first two games, total of 89 points. This week, it's been a return to fundamentals and getting players in the right place. You know, we, we know we play good people that can make plays, and, uh, you know, we, we have to make them do that. You know, we have, and that's part of just executing and, uh, and being fundamentally sound and and you know, and that'll help guys play harder and more aggressive, and, and play with that sense of urgency that we're all looking for. Mentally, you know, it's been it's been tough, you know, and uh, we just gotta you know, we gotta bounce back, and that's what coaches preach to us. You know, we gotta bounce back, and you know, it's, um, some things that you know that we did ourselves, and we weren't consistent enough, and you know, on third downs we gotta win, things like that, and uh, we really stretched that this week in practice. You know, we've been. Going harder and you know, um, really honing in on what we got to you know control ourselves. So Mark Stoops and company looking for that first one of the season four o'clock kick on the SEC Network alternate channel in Lexington is channel 518 on Time Warner. The John L. Smith era at UK State at Kentucky State has begun, and on Saturday Smith will coach his first home game in Frankfurt. The Thoroughbreds host Virginia State at Alumni Stadium. And for a team looking for its first win of the season, KSU has only scored 10 points, so the Breds need to get something going. We have to believe that we can run the ball, so we've got to be able to force our guys and believe that we can come off and, and uh, move some people off the line of scrimmage and be able to run the ball. Uh, our two running backs are probably two of our best players, so we have to have a lot of confidence in them, and then we have to just keep uh, kicking that front in the tail and make sure that, that, that they believe that we can as well. And then we're experimenting with some things at quarterback, and we'll have to wait and see. You might see a young kid in there and uh, see what he can do with the ball. And we have our WKYT High School Game Time Top 10. No change at the top. Scott County and Lafayette meet up tonight in our Game of the Week from Georgetown. 
Number three LCA is at Walton Verona. Danville suffered its first defeat of the season last week. They drop a spot down to number four. Southwestern is five. They're hosting undefeated Corbin. Somerset is six. Madison Southern is undefeated. They're at number eight. Tates Creek. Madison Central is nine. And Pulaski County is ranked tenth. And Mercer County has a new boys basketball coach. Kurt Young, the head coach at Hopewell High School in Hopewell, Virginia, will be returning to Kentucky. Young played at East Carter and Center. He's a longtime assistant coach at the college level, including stints at Northern Kentucky for six seasons, Arkansas Tech with Kelly Wells out at Hawaii Pacific, and was with Happy Osborne at Georgetown College. He's now at Mercer County. Sam Amber, back to you. Thanks, Rob. A final check of your first word forecast for the weekend is next. And then on the CBS Evening News, what's in the ink? An investigation into unregulated tattooing. For more local news and perspective on the day's events, join Jennifer Palumbo and me for WKYT News at 6.30 on the CW Lexington. Tonight, we'll have more on the drug epidemic in Kentucky and next week's visit by the U.S. Attorney General. Chris Bailey joins us along with Dave Buzz Baker and his one-of-a-kind take on sports. You don't want to miss that. Absolutely. We've been talking about rain for mm -hmm. this weekend. Seems like for a long time. Yeah, You've got here. some showers trying to fire up not right we, now. We do. Little hot spots of showers and thunderstorms are out there. We'll touch on those in just a moment over on the CW. See you there. Mm -hmm.